Focusing our faith. As we travel on our spiritual journey, we are to keep our eyes on our personal protector, the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's Gene. Psalm 121 is the second song of ascent. And as you read this psalm, you'll see progression geographically. Look at uh, verses 1 and 2, Psalm 121. I lift my eyes toward the mountains. Where will my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. And here we have a song of confidence, but it's a prayer for protection because the environment was hostile. There were thieves. There were robbers. But here you have a song of assurance that God is going to protect. The Lord will protect you from all harm. He will protect your life. The Lord will protect your coming and going both now and forever. And as I read that verse, I remembered a parable that Jesus taught. And he gives us somewhat of the backstory behind this parable. And it was really a parable that Jesus uh, spoke to reveal the hypocrisy that existed among the Pharisees. But the back story, as it were, in this parable helps us to understand even what we read here in this psalm. For example, notice in Luke 10, verses 30 and 31, Jesus took up the question and said, now there, the question that came from this Pharisee, trying to trick Jesus in a sense, is who's my neighbor? But what I want you to see is the story that he told them and how it relates to this psalm. Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem. Now, remember, the prayer is for help whether you're coming or going, right? Coming or going. Up to or down from Jerusalem. And here, the geography points to the fact that a man was going down from Jerusalem, going down towards Jericho. It's called the Jericho Road. And he fell into the hands of robbers. And there you have one reason why the children of Israel prayed for protection. It was very dangerous to make that trip. They stripped him. They beat him up. They fled, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road. Now, that simply means a priest was going down from Jerusalem, following the road down to Jericho near the Dead Sea. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And of course, the story goes on to tell us that a Levite did the very same thing. But there was a Samaritan who lived north of Jerusalem in the area of Samaria, Samaria, by the way, where King Jeroboam, years before, centuries before, had his uh, palace. Uh, but here's a Samaritan who was not a Jew. And the Jews looked down on the Samaritans because they were half-breeds, a mixture of Jew and Gentile. And that's the story that Jesus wants to get across, that this man had compassion. But the reason I wanted to share that with you is that it does relate back to this psalm in the sense that they were praying for the Lord's protection, whether they were coming up to Jerusalem or whether they were going down to Jerusalem, back to their homeland or wherever they were and where they had come from. So you see the connection here really between the Psalms that were written so many centuries ago and what we read in the Gospels in relationship to these journeys up to Jerusalem and down from Jerusalem. Now when we look at the, uh, the New Testament, again as we correlate this, under the New Covenant, we're never told to look to Jerusalem, to look up to Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a very, very important place in our history, because that's where Jesus died, and that's where He rose again. But we're, what we're to do is to keep our eyes on Jesus. And that's a message that really comes through in this principle. 
Here's uh, Hebrews chapter 12, which underscores this. Therefore, since we also have such a large cloud of witnesses surrounding us, and let me simply say that the backdrop to this whole thing is a huge stadium. And you can see that stadium behind the words of Scripture. It was circular. This happens to be a stadium in Turkey. A real stadium that has been unearthed. And so the metaphor is, since we also have such a large cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that lies before us, keeping our eyes on whom? On Jerusalem? No. On Jesus keeping our eyes on Jesus, the source and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that lay before Him endured a cross, despised the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of God's throne. Let me give you a closer look at that stadium. I've stood in that stadium. And as I stood in that stadium, as I sat on those stones, as I looked out at that stadium, my mind went back to this paragraph from... Hebrews. We don't know who the author was. He wrote later in New Testament history, one of the later books that was written. But personally, I think he was thinking of a stadium just like this. And the witnesses were located there around, totally around, as they were watching the runners run. And in that sense, we are in that stadium, as it were, in the metaphor. And we're running that race and we're to keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. An incredible metaphor to demonstrate, to illustrate this whole concept that we look at that grows out of this principle that grows out of this song. Let me just uh, review that principle so we get the continuity here. As we travel on our spiritual journey, we're to keep our eyes on our personal protector, the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I was thinking about that concept, I was thinking about a song that I learned years ago. It was written years ago. And basically the, the writer of the song back in the 20s, 1920s, saw a, um, a little track and there was a little statement on that track. And here's, here's what, what this person saw when they picked up this little track. So then, turn your eyes upon Him. And of course, that's referring to Jesus. Look full in His face, and you will find that the things of earth will acquire a strange new dimness. And as the author of this song, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, read those words, she penned these words, which I think are beautiful. O soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness, you see? There's light for a look at the Savior, and life more abundant and free. And here's the chorus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in His wonderful face, and the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Now, when you look at the... Uh, question for application, for reflection and response. It simply reads this way, what are some of the more common reasons we take our spiritual eyes off of Jesus Christ? And as I reflect upon my own life, there's a lot of things. Just plain busyness, schedules, demands. But in addition to that, there's the world's influences. We're being bombarded with it all the time, these influences. And uh, we're, we're, we're actually given a lot of deceitful lies that there is fulfillment in this world, ultimate fulfillment. Now, there's nothing wrong with the things that we need, but basically the lie is that real fulfillment it's not spiritual, it's physical, it's emotional. That's what we have in this world. 
And I think we really, really need this message that's inherent in this particular psalm. So here again is that principle. Just underscore this concept, this truth. As we travel on our spiritual journey, we are to keep our eyes on our personal protector, the Lord Jesus Christ. 